the first thing that you need to do is to prepare your silk. And I'm going to give it a good press. Get rid of all those creases. I always suggest that you steam press fabric before you do any embroidery on it. And if you're going to wash it, then wash the fabric before you do the embroidery as well. But obviously, this is silk dupion, and I don't want to get any water near it at all. Some people say you can wash silk dupion. I've never been able to do that successfully. So that's pressed now. This freebie is just a little bit bigger than your normal 4x4. Four four. So we're doing it in my 120 hoop. And I've got two pieces here of heat and gone. Right, now this is Floriani heat and gone, but Sulky makes something almost identical. There's a smooth side and a rough side. And I tend to put the smooth side at the bottom and then put the on the second layer, do the same. I've stitched these designs out with just one layer and it's not sufficient to hold the stitches, the, the bars that create the rich loo work, which are in fact really tiny little segments of freestanding lace. Please excuse my dirty hoop, but that shows I've been busy. I'm going to tighten it slightly and as I always do, have a look at the back and that seems to have gone in. I always push slightly proud in all four corners. There we are. Now that is ready to be embroidered. And so we're going to go over to my machine and we're going to do the first section, the first colour, which is some very unique stitches that show you where to cut, but they are, I've designed them in such a way that they will hold the fabric very securely and you won't get fraying issues. Right, we're going to attach. I've already sent this design to my my machine. Just, just see with a different light. A few wrinkles there, so I'm going to tighten that up. Just check it again, that looks fine. Right, now this is quite a small design. Um, 4,370 stitches. Now, obviously we don't need any outlines, but I would say, because I don't normally hoop my fabric, but because I want everything to stay as good as possible i'm going i'm going to do a box of stitches to hold everything in place so i'm going to do a box of fixing stitches and on my machine these are these can be around the design or around the box and i'm going to do around the hoop And of course, I could have done both for more security. When you download the freebie and put it on your machine, you'll see that these first stitches are, I've coloured them red. That's only to tell you that they are something important, something which will give you an outline. And I'm going to stitch. And of course, I could have done both for more security. When you download the freebie and put it on your machine, you will see that these first stitches are, I've coloured them red. That's only to tell you that they are something important, something which will give you an outline. And I'm going to stitch the satin of the, the cut work in, in a soft white. So I'm going to do these in the soft white. If you did them in the red, it may peek through. So you need to choose the color which you're going to do the subsequent stitches out with. So let's stitch this outline. Now, I think it is important not to try and do cuts with your hoop 
in mm -hmm. place, take it off the machine to do that, but obviously leave it inside the hoop. So I'm going to go over to my table and show you how I cut the fabric. The most important thing to remember is that you must have really sharp scissors and to do to do the trimming. What I tend to do is I use the tip of these squizzers, as they're called. I think that's how you say it. They are very sharp, but they are curved. And that means when I'm cutting, if the curve is uppermost, it's going to be held away from the stabilizer, which must be left in place. So I use the tip to just ease them in. And when that's in, I turn it over and I make sure that it hasn't gone through the stabilizer. And then I can snip. And, and it's literally, I am pushing this against the stitches as hard as I can, you know, I'm not, I'm not leaving a gap. And of course, as you come round, you can, you can also hold the fabric up as well. Now, if you want to, you can check the back and make sure that the stabiliser is all in place. Now, one thing you can do, and I, I haven't done it today, is that it's a lot easier to cut round if you place your hoop on a rotating cutting, cutting mat. I have one, but it's not a, not to hand at the moment. And it will just make, if you're doing one of the larger designs in this collection and you've got several areas to, to cut, it, it means you can twist it round easily. So it's important to go as close to these stitches as possible. And the other important thing to do is to go on the back and tidy up any jump stitches. You don't want any threads on the back. It's got to be nice and neat so that when your satin work is done, everything, there are no threads, hopefully, that are protruding. I'm just going to go in on this curve and just cut into those. Now, if you do cut by mistake, what you need to do is get a tiny piece of your stabilizer and I suppose really you should do you should do two pieces and you need a little bit of tape and what you're going to do is just going to cut two little pieces or one piece that you can fold in half I'm going to snip into this I know it's that yeah we've got a we've got a bit that needs repairing now I'm going to cut these into two bits. I don't want them because I want to do the nice layer of. So I'm going to put that on there. It doesn't behave itself because it's there's a little bit of static when you're working with it. I have, I have sometimes actually put a bit of temporary adhesive on it to um, hold it all in place. Then with a little bit of tape. I'm going to tape these down and obviously they're floating underneath but because this stuff moves around they've got to be held in place. Now with a repair like this remember that it must be removed after the satin work has been done. Don't leave it in place because we've got flowers and things going around here and it's probably best if they're not uh, stitching into the tape. So this can go back to the machine now. Look at it at the top here. And uh, just making sure that there's it's all nice and uh, clean, ready for the satin work. Oops, back on here. And I'm just checking that my repair is all in place. And I'm going to try and pull up the stitches 
Oops, no. I'm never very good at that. But anyway, let's leave that. There we are. We've got both of them there. That will mean I turned my wheel to do that. It means that there'll be no threads caught underneath. And hopefully the satin work will be nice and clean. I'm going to stop that and I'm going to trim these threads off. I can't do the ones underneath. But uh, right, that is done now, and uh, I'm really pleased with that. And I hope you can see all the detail with this overhead camera. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the floral embroidery, which is at the top of the bottom. But we're going to take this off the hoop. We're going to examine it underneath and we're going to remove that tape, which I think is a good idea. So I can trim that away. To remove that. Hmm. Obviously, the repair is now being held in place by the satin stitches that we did, so I can trim that away. Sometimes you get a few stitches appear on these curves. They can be trimmed away. They're, they're not, uh, it just pulls out sometimes, but they're, they're extra stitches underlay. And when you trim them away, it won't affect, obviously if it's done it carefully, won't affect the, um, the design integrity. I'm going to do the four colors, five colors of the flowers. Um, I won't show you how they stitch out because it's just ordinary embroidery, but when they're done, I'll show you the results and how we take away the stabiliser. Right, the embroidery is now finished, so I can remove it from the hoop and there we can see it. So let's go and have an examine of it all and do the necessary finishing touches, removing the stabiliser. Now I have to confess that I was very loath to use heat and gone heat away stabiliser because when I first started doing machine embroidery I got into a terrible mess with it and found it very unsatisfactory. In fact one of the earliest types I had was a cloth based heat away that Sulky made and that was uh, not very nice but I've discovered it, it's not something to be afraid of. In fact it's easy to work with. So here's our finished embroidery. So I'm going to take it out of the hoop. And if we go to the back, we can see we can see we got lots of jump stitches. So I'm going to remove the worst of them. This this section this this finishing off of your designs cannot be rushed. It has to be done carefully um, because especially the trimming of the the jump stitches because if you don't remove them all they can peek through the cut work but I'm just quickly removing the worst of them and I'm also going to snip the box of securing stitches that went round the outside. I'll just snip it in a few places.
and then that will allow me to microphone sitting the camera which is not a good idea now remember if i can if i can do this with a camera in between me and the work then you can do it easily with um yourself so we've got rid of that outline and i tend to when i've got two lots of layers of stabilizer i tend to remove them separately and and it and it rips quite easily so you can just rip rip it away so in that in that uh you know it's it's not very different from stitch and tear in fact to a certain extent and this is also used as a topping to prevent your embroidery sinking into fabrics like toweling and velvet there we are the worst of it's off um i've not discovered anything to do with the with the bits that you remove there they need to be thrown away never like to put stabilizer in the bin not big chunks of it right we've removed most of the the jump stitches and I've just got a little bit of thread sticking up there which hasn't quite trimmed. Now you could just put your iron on it now and remove these sections but I find it's a little bit better to to do a little bit more preparation before you remove them. Now one thing to remember as you do your removal the satin around the edge is a lot more stable than the bars that go across so if you're going to do any pulling it needs to be where the where it's attached to the satin here all right and it will pull away quite easily but this doing it like this i'm not putting any any strain on the now this is where we have the extra tape so the extra stabilizer should i say I mean, obviously, it's better if you don't have to do any repairs, but it's not the end of the world. Now, you could lift these up. If they're, they're tape, if they're moved away from one side, you can lift them up. Sorry, my hand's in the way and just snip them off. All right. The, the secret is to remove as much of the heat and gone stabilizer. And you'll find afterwards that your floor is littered with tiny little bits of uh, transparent uh, stabiliser you just snip it off because when you heat it it turns into a a little bauble basically just got to do this one whoops now you see how it's important to move it from the base this has got an awful lot of stabiliser so I'm going to snip into it that's it and cut it away so you're removing just the excess. Sorry if I'm making it look a bit awkward, but it's it's always a little extra challenge to uh, work around a camera. Right, that's the majority of it off. And if we hold it up, we can see most of it's it's gone. Sometimes these stitches appear here and I'm literally going to just snip them away. There's 
It won't do any harm to do that. Right. I'm pressing here on a wall mat. I don't think it will hurt the wall mat, but I've got a tiny piece of calico that I'm going to put onto my surface um, just so that nothing is damaged. The first time you remove stabiliser, put your iron on a medium setting. And, and it's better to start with it not hot enough than at the other extreme and uh, have it too hot. I've got it just between my wool and silk and linen and cotton setting. And when I was doing this the other day, I, uh, I started at the lower range of the silk. Now, you don't find that much happens when you just put the whole iron on like I'm doing here. But if you use the tip and lift things up, then that does seem to do the trick. And obviously you iron on the back. You don't want to squash your embroidery. I'm just going to take that up a tiny notch more because we can still see we have a little bit here. I think that's where we have the extra stabiliser. So I just let it heat it up, heat it up a little bit more. Yesterday I was doing some removal. Just while it's heating up, I'm going to show you on this particular one. Now this one is probably the most delicate uh, embroidery in the collection because you can see it has very long bars and and you want to remove as much as the of the, the stabilizer as possible and keep them tight so that they don't get disfigured and obviously in these situations you can get the iron in between them but I wouldn't do that one first start with the freebie right hopefully that's heated up a bit but I think I've successfully removed so much stabiliser that I can't show you the little bally ballies that uh, the iron will make of it. I suppose I could pick them up off the floor from yesterday's, but uh, you will get you will get some. Now let's, and you also will find that if they're not completely melted, sometimes they're stuck to the fibres on the back, and you can just trim them away. I'm just doing that area there, but they all seem to be, it all seems to be gone nicely. I'm just going to take the corner of the iron like that, just so that the actual metal can get in there. And I did notice that uh, the instructions that came with the stabiliser said that a stainless steel iron is a lot better for this. But start in a small way and with a, with a low temperature, and uh, you'll you'll be okay. And it's it's when you turn it over, and I'm going to remove this calico, and I'm going to put one of my favourite silks down. This is what I call my ice cream, strawberry ice cream silk. You probably can't see in the picture, in the video, it's not picking it up. I'll lay that in there because it looks a bit nicer as the background, rather than the the grey of my wool mat and, and that's good. I can just see now here I have definitely got a hard bit. I'm going to take that silk away. Just get into that, into that corner. Now obviously if you're going to be doing these designs on any fabric like cotton that can be washed, then you can use a wash away stabiliser. But I challenge myself, and those of you who know me know that I love to embroider on silk and I wanted to make cut work designs that would embroider out on silk. And there we have, there we have the freebie. Easy to produce if you take your time and do a little practice run with this freebie before 
perhaps you buy the whole collection and start creating some beautiful heirloom embroidery designs. Thank you for watching. Um, do leave your comments. Tell me what you think. And uh, I look forward to people sending me photos of the projects that they are able to make with these designs. There are, or I think there are over a hundred. There are five sets in the collection with over a hundred designs. I put a, there's a heart in there made with the Richelieu bars. And there are also three sizes of buttonholes because I believe every heirloom collection needs buttonholes. So do leave a comment and if you're not subscribed to this channel, it'd be great if you did, because then if you hit the little bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And that is your chance to come and visit me here in my embroidery studio. Thank you for watching. Bye for now and happy embroidering.